The 2024 NBA Draft might not have a generational talent like Victor Wimbanyama, but it does have tons of solid players, some of whom are sure to be all-stars one day. In today's video, I'm giving you the way too early 2024 mock draft. Let the tanking begin. Hey guys, it's Troy. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notification bells for quality NBA content several times a week. Okay, so since we don't know what order the draft will be because it's like a year away, I'm using the records of teams from this past season. So as a result, Detroit has the first pick in this draft, but teams like the Wizards or Blazers or Hornets are a possibility here too. So for the first pick, I have Detroit picking Zachary Rizache. He's a 6'9 forward, about 200 pounds, out of France. We could be having a Frenchman get picked number one overall for the second year in a row. But what I like about Rizache is his quick release on his jumper is hard to guard. He moves well off the ball. He gets to his spots. He's a good cutter. He'll also be one of the youngest players in the 2024 draft. And check this out. His dad was on France's silver medal winning Olympic team in 2000. So he has that basketball pedigree. And it's a fun name to say, Zachary Rizache. Pick number two I have being made by the Houston Rockets, and they're selecting Matis Buzelis. Buzelis is 6'10", 6'11", about 200 pounds. He's hyped up as a super tall point guard, but in the NBA, I see him more as a point forward type of player. He's chosen to play his first year out of high school in the G League. And he chose the Ignite over schools like Kentucky, North Carolina, Florida State, and Wake Forest. They call Buzelis the Praying Mantis because of his length and his skill set. Although I'm not sure exactly how good at basketball Praying Mantises are. But I digress. Buzelis can be plugged into multiple positions on the basketball court. He handles the ball like a guard, shoots it well from outside, and he's a really solid rebounder. He is pretty skinny, so he'll have to put on some weight, but there's a ton to like about his game as an NBA prospect. Plus, he'll have an upper hand playing with the Ignite next season, so he's going to get an early introduction to NBA rules and spacing and more freedom to create in the open floor. Pick number three, I have the San Antonio Spurs selecting Cody Williams. He's a 6'8 forward who's going to be playing at Colorado. He's the younger brother of Jalen Williams, who plays for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now I'm talking about the Santa Clara former first round pick, Jalen Williams, since there are two on that team. But his brother Cody was one of the most improved players from his junior to senior year in high school. He's good at getting the ball to his spots and using his length on defense to guard multiple positions. And I don't have to tell you this, there is value in long, versatile wings in today's NBA. So he checks a lot of boxes there in what scouts are looking for in young players high in the lottery. For pick number four, I have the Charlotte Hornets selecting Ron Holland, 6'7 forward, about 200 pounds. He'll be playing in the G League with Buzelis, who I had earlier in this draft. Ron Holland is the number one recruit from the class of 2023, and he actually decommitted from Texas in order to play for the G League. But Holland can make tough shots. He usually makes the right pass to the open man when the defense collapses. During his high school season, he was a little inconsistent with his shot selection, but he looks way more polished and has turned up his intensity and focus on the court recently. At pick number five, I have the Portland Trailblazers selecting Donovan Klingon. Look at this, by the time the draft rolls around, we'll have a guy being picked who's actually spent two years in college. Klingon was on the national championship UConn team from last year, and he played a big role for them off the bench. Check him out, he is 7'2", about 270 pounds. You are drafting this guy with the hopes that you'll be getting a Walker Kessler type of player. I think we can all agree that Walker Kessler was drafted way too low, so I don't think that NBA teams will make that mistake again. Klingon dominates the paint with his size and frame, and he is a physical center who makes the right reads when the defense collapses. Also, he was one of the most efficient players in college last year. In only 13 minutes a game, he averaged over seven points, six rebounds, and two blocks per game. For pick number six, I have the Orlando Magic selecting Justin Edwards. 
6'7 forward out of the University of Kentucky. Edwards is a long and athletic wing, one of the best defenders in transition in this draft. Really good at playing the passing lanes, and he's good at chasing down blocks on the other end of the floor. He was the number three recruit for this incoming college class. So you draft him hoping he checks the boxes as one of those three and D players at a minimum and a super athlete with all-star potential on the high end. At pick number seven, I have the Indiana Pacers selecting Isaiah Collier. He's a 6'3 guard who will be a freshman at USC. He was the number one guard coming out of high school, and he is a pass-first point guard who excels when getting downhill and finding open teammates. During the McDonald's All-American game, Collier led all players with 25 points. I like him as a big guard who can bully smaller players. For pick number eight, I have the Washington Wizards selecting Tyrese Proctor, sophomore out of Duke. He's a 6'5 guard, grew up in Australia, and in his first year at Duke showed glimpses of what he could be at the NBA level, but he still needs a little bit more time to develop his game. He originally reclassified a grade up, so he's one of the youngest players in college as a sophomore, and he's a great passer, really good facilitator. Duke's head coach has a talented group coming in next season, and Proctor could be the first player off the board for that Duke squad. For pick number nine, I have the Utah Jazz selecting Thierry Darlan. He's a 6'7", swing man, also playing in the G League. That G League team is going to be stacked. He played with the NBA Academy Africa in Senegal prior to committing to the Ignite, and he picked them over schools like Kansas and Arizona. But he has an incredible 7'2 wingspan, and that stands out immediately when you watch him play. He's still a bit of a raw player, but he boasts significant potential as a big guard at the NBA level. We saw how high Bilal Koulibaly was drafted, and I think Darlan could see the same result. At pick number 10, I have the Dallas Mavericks selecting Adi Mera. He's a 7-3 center out of Spain. This dude is huge, but he's a nice passer, has really good skill, moves his feet well for a guy his size, and of course, great length. He's got good footwork, really good shot blocker, scores inside or scores outside. Very young for this draft, too, and maybe it's just the Spanish thing, but I'm seeing comparisons to Pau Gasol. At pick number 11, I have the Chicago Bulls selecting Jacoby Walter. He's an incoming freshman for Baylor, but he's an instant offensive threat with his shot-making ability and the way he stretches the floor. Particularly good in catch-and-shoot situations, even with a defender in his face. Walter will need to add some weight to his frame, but he uses his body well when finding pockets on the offense to get to the rim. Baylor has been cranking out NBA draft picks lately, and I think Walter will be the next. For pick number 12, I have the Oklahoma City Thunder selecting DJ Wagner, 6'4 guard, who is committed to Kentucky. You may remember DJ's dad, Dewan Wagner, who was drafted in the early 2000s. DJ has a chance to become the first third-generation player ever because his grandfather actually played in the NBA too. But DJ is a scorer, much like his father, who doesn't produce a whole lot else. That's why he needs to be better as a facilitator, and he needs to score more efficiently. You'd like to see him rebounding and assisting at a little bit more of a higher level. So if he can't add that, his future may be as a sixth man microwave scorer off the bench. For pick number 13, I have the Toronto Raptors selecting Aaron Bradshaw. He's a 7-1 center who's also committed to Kentucky. Bradshaw and Wagner actually played together in high school in New Jersey. But Bradshaw looks like he may miss the beginning of the basketball season due to a foot injury. But right now, I've got him as a lotto pick. He plays a very similar game to Derek Lively, who was drafted 12th out of Duke. But NBA teams value rim-running centers who can be an offensive threat from three-point range. And Bradshaw shows early signs of that during his high school season and postseason All-Star games. I think scouts will be watching closely to see how this injury impacts his mobility once he returns to the court. And for pick number 14, I have the New Orleans Pelicans selecting Bronny James, 6'3 guard who's also going to USC. It's LeBron's son, so all eyes will be on him this season to see what he can do at the collegiate level. We have been following him since grade school. But so far, Bronny has made a good first impression with NBA scouts as a complimentary piece alongside the perimeter who can knock down wide open shots. And defensively, he was one of the best on-ball guards in high school. And of course, he has that James athleticism.
And you have to remember, the team that drafts Bronny may also get LeBron as a free agent in a package deal. So will that impact how high Bronny goes? Guys, there you have it. Let me know what you think of these picks and who you've got on your mock draft. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the like button and subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on the Half Court Report.